Um, Allah, good morning. Good morning, boys. Good. Did you have any questions about yes, the last uh, writing assignment? Yes, uh, being, I really like, between being is, I confused when I was writing it. Like, I don't know. I even put it in purpose so you correct it for me because I was <laughs> confused. Okay. Let's, let's take a look at it then. I've got your stuff right here. Okay, so yours is the second one here. Uh, first paragraph, very nice. To start with, cold water from the surface being pumped into the ground through the injection well, which is 4.5 kilometers in depth. Okay. Okay, let's do these, these examples here. So this is baby English. It starts with this step, cold water is pumped into the ground. So now to combine these together, what do we have to do here? We have to make a relative close to it, like add a relative close. I mean, uh, Relative, uh, <clears throat> like uh, which, for example, common which cold water is pumped into the ground? Um, well, you would do, it starts with this step, comma, which is cold water. It's pumped it, into the ground. It's, cold water is pumped into the, it's gonna be a bit awkward. So we're gonna get rid of this. It starts with cold water. And we need to change this. Being? Yeah. But this is your main verb, right? Yes. It starts with what? So this whole thing here functions as a big noun. And it does not have... Um, its own verb per se. This is a participle. Cold water being pumped into the ground. This cold water being pumped into the ground can't be a sentence on its own because this is not a normal verb. Oh, so, so in this, yeah, go ahead. So in my sentence, it's wrong, like I, I cut the sentence with the comma, right? So it's not the verb of the start. And, and my, so in my, in my sentence? You don't really have a verb here. Yeah. So co cold water from the surface is your subject. And this is your verb, but this is just a present simple passive voice. So it should be cold water is pumped into the ground.
So like if we change the sentence, uh, it starts with cold water from the surface being is okay, right? It starts with cold water being pumped in the ground. This is the proper way to do it. Uh, how about this sentence? The procedure starts with this step. The patient is first given the blue pill. This is the So we'll get rid of this. Being given the... Where does being go? Uh, instead of is. Mm -hmm. But we're going to put it here. Can anyone make another example sentence using this structure? There's a high, higher likelihood that you'll remember if you create your own example. So I'd like everyone, not just Allah, but I'd like everyone to make this kind of sentence where we're using this structure that we talked about last week. The car starts with key first being and like, what is the place that we put the key in the car? Uh, car wash? No, car starting. The key, the key, like if you want to start the car. Oh, uh, the ignition. Yeah, the ignition. So what's what's the full sentence? Uh, we can say the motor starts with key, first key being into the ignition key. Inserted, yes, into the ignition team. Ignition. Okay. How about someone else making a sentence like this? The children, the children are being given toys. Sorry, it's it's really quiet. <laughs> the children are being given toys. So this is a bit different. Are being given. Uh, do you know what verb tense that is? Present, present passive, present continuous. So is the present uh, continuous uh, passive. Right. So these are the same thing. So this is uh, not quite the same thing that we're doing here because this is this doesn't have any time information. The key being inserted into the ignition, the patient being given the blue pill doesn't have any time information. The only time information is here. Mm -hmm. uh, just to 
give you an idea. This is present simple, right? Yeah. If I change this to the procedure started and I change it to past tense, this doesn't change at all. Yeah. The motor will start with the key being inserted into the ignition. Again, you're only conjugating the main verb and you don't touch these. So in a sense, this is what makes this grammar pretty simple because there's no time information in it. So you can use it with any time. This is quite specific. This is present continuous and this is the passive version of uh, present continuous. So it's a little bit different. Being is the participle of is. Yeah. Okay, so we need another example. The recipe uh, starts with the flour mm, being mixed uh, with the eggs. Good. Okay, so this one, I've mixed things up a little bit. I don't know if anyone can figure this out. This, pro uh, this product is being grown, grown locally. So is grown is, what's this verb tense called? Present passive. Right, it's present simple passive voice. Right, farmers grow this product locally. When your subject is farmers grow, that's not a very good subject because it's too obvious. So we get rid of it, change it to passive voice. This product is grown locally. Um, what is this? This whole thing, right? Yeah. This fact. This fact means we get it fresh from the farm. So you need to, we need to transform this Relative clause? Not a relative clause because it's going to be the subject of this verb. So it's going to function as a subject, as a big noun. So after the noun, this product, we need to transform this into the participle. So it's one change that you're doing. Being can grow. That's it. We can't say this product being grown locally, comma, which means we get it from fresh from the farm. No, you can't do that. You said this? Yes. It's not about being, it's just like grammar. This is fine. This is a correct relative clause, but this is not an independent clause. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can add as many of these as you want, but you need to have an independent clause in your sentence. Uh, Do you before, know what that means? Yes, before the, before the comma, right? Some place in the sentence, you need to have an independent clause. So the, this one you wrote here, to start with cold water from the surface being pumped, there's no independent clause in the original version. Uh, cold water from the surface being pumped into the ground through the injection well, that's not a sentence because there's no verb, right? Because you had being, which is a participle and not a verb. And then you had a relative clause here, which also is not an independent clause. So the problem with this was all the different parts were fine independently, but when you put them together, it's not a sentence because there's no independent clause. That's the same with this last example here. This is correct as a modifier, and this is correct as a modifier, but two modifiers together don't give you a sentence because you're still missing an independent clause. Okay. In this case, this whole thing here is only functioning as a big noun. It's the subject of the verb means. So in, in that case, there is independent clause by means? Well, this is the subject and this is the predicate. Sometimes with noun clauses, it's a little bit tricky to break it up in that uh, independent clause, dependent clause way. Like, I'll give you an example, and I hope this doesn't confuse you. When you say, I don't know what he's doing, This is your verb, and this is the object, right? Yes. So this is a noun clause. What he's doing is a noun clause. And this is just the subject and the verb. So in this case, there is no independent clause that doesn't include the dependent clause. I'm going to write that down. That even sounds confusing to say, but... Normally, when it's easy to see the difference between a dependent clause and a independent clause, right? Here, you've got your dependent clause because it's very sunny today. And then you've got your independent clause, right? Yes. So it's a very clear difference between the two. But with noun clauses, it's not so simple to see the difference because the noun clause takes the place of an object or a subject. Okay. So it's not a clear cut separation between the independent and the dependent clause. Okay. So if you wrote this, it would be 
sentence fragment. Okay, so let's let's see if we can come up with some more examples. The game starts mm -hmm. with the player being uh, warmed up. Uh, the player is warming up. The player. The game starts. Or the game started with the players being warmed. So the players warm up is an independent clause. The players warming up is you've got Again. a noun and then you've got a participial phrase. Jesus, I'm sorry. Excuse me. So the I thought I, put, I thought I put my mute on. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is the players warm up. It's independent, right? Yes, this is a simple sentence. Present simple. The players warming up is a phrase. It, it's just like a dependent clause. And if you want to change it to past tense, it would be like this. Or if it's going to be future, but the rest of it doesn't change. Just like here, right? The procedure starts with the patient first being given the blue pill. The procedure will start. The procedure started with the patient first being ba ba ba. The difference here, check it out. Being given is a passive participial phrase, right? Yes. Because it's the doctors give or the nurse gives the pill. So the patient is being given the pill, the person, the patient is given the, kill, the pill, the patient being given the pill. In this case, this is active voice because the players are warming up. It's not somebody warming up the players. Okay, so then we cannot say the game started with the players being warmed up. So it's spark. Because who, who's warming up the players? No, nobody, yeah. Let's let's choose a different example where you have where you can have some kind of passive action that the players are the recipient of. Can anyone think of a passive verb that could work in the same sentence that Allah came up with? Instead of warming up, what could we put in here that makes sense in passive voice? Okay, I think uh, the game starts. Uh, the game starts 
with the players being trained? Sure. Being given instructions, being trained. Now it's passive, right? Yeah. He was sent overseas. This caused him to miss the celebration. Chomri. Uh, he was sent overseas, uh, causing him to miss the celebration. Okay, good. You thought of the other way to do it. That is correct. You can transform an independent clause, a relative clause, a subordinate clause into a participial phrase. So well done. We can also transform the first part of the sentence into because uh, this is he was sent overseas right these are the same thing this fact caused him to miss the celebration so, so we can transform this into yeah. the subject of caused he was being sent to he was being sent overseas i'm going to write that down uh one more time please He was being sent overseas. And then what did you do with the rest of it? So it caused him, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, caused him to miss the celebration. Last class, I mentioned a rule that said nouns can have one job. They can either be the subject or an object, but they can't do both at the same time. Mm -hmm. So what is the subject of caused? Uh, uh, being sent overseas? There you go. Being sent, being sent overseas. That's uh, correct now. He, he missed the being sent overseas. So this is your subject now. This is correct. Mm -hmm. Being sent overseas. He caused him to miss the celebration. Okay. Two ways to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, at, uh, when I checked your recording uh, of the class, the recording that you sent uh, after the class, uh, first time I saw this also in your recording, but last time I, I don't know whether I have, done, I have checked wrongly because I couldn't come across the very first, uh, uh, like uh, initial start of the class, uh, the way you describe all the grammar lesson in your recording. So do we get this also uh, as a- Oh, I, I cut that off. If you want me to include it, I can. 
maybe in two separate uh, uh, if you, if you really want to have that separated so if you can have this because this is really good even i was trying to you know record through my phone i couldn't you know consider, concentrate while recording to grab what you say so i stopped doing that so if you can put this as a separate recording it's really appreciated sure i can do that no problem thank you Okay, so just to finish up this part of the lesson, can every person come up with their own sentence using this structure? And not just this format, the procedure starts with, I think, I think you get this now. What about this kind of structure? Note again, he was sent this is passive voice, right? That's why we're using this being. Instead of is sent, you're just changing the auxiliary to being, keep the verb as it is. I have a example. Just give, give me one sec. This I'm just gonna write one thing down. Okay, go ahead, Allah. Um, being sent home caused him to miss the class. Good. Okay, nice. Uh, Dina, do you have one? Dina might have stepped away. Safa, how about you? Uh, being sick um, caused him to mess up them. Good. Chamri? Uh, I couldn't I couldn't come up with something yet. All right, how about why don't you try this one? Uh, okay. Being given a second chance. To submit their work. The students improve the quality of the work. Oh, first part was great. Uh, or oh, uh, they improved the quality of the work? This whole thing here, in this construction, what is this? Okay, so uh, cost. Being given a second chance to submit their work caused students to improve the quality of the work? Yeah, or you can just use the verb that's already there. Work improved. Okay, improved. Yeah, yeah, being given a second chance to submit their work improved the quality of the work. 
Yeah, but shouldn't mm. we mention the shouldn't we mention uh, who is included into the sentence? So you would okay, good. Improved. Good point. The quality of students' work. Good. No, because we have already mentioned work after submit there. Yeah, but we don't know who there is. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Yan, uh, uh, for example, being, uh, being, this, being the state at home decreases the spread of COVID-19. It's not okay. Mm. Why? Does, can you use stay passively? There's a being be, staying at home. Mm -hmm. Because stay doesn't. If you made this into a simple sentence, you wouldn't use stay passively. Passive, okay. Being forced to stay at home. There you go. Ah, I got your point. I. Yes, you can be forced by someone, or rather... By someone, yeah. okay. Yeah. So when you use being as a subject also, this sentence needs to be in a passive voice. Then we can convert it. This is what now I am. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Being happy is good. Okay. So so, so here it depends. He, so sorry. In, sorry. In in some cases, I've got this. Where is that awful book I used to show people? Um, oh, I have this really scary book I like to show people, but I can't find it right now. Okay. Um, arguably, gerunds are participles. Okay. Um, so yeah, so this is a common example. I love biking, biking is fun. So gerund functions as a noun, but being happy. Uh, Vective voice. Yeah. Okay. It, this is like a better way of saying, if you are happy, that is good for your health. Mm. Being forced to stay at home. Good, this is a really good example. Stay can be used passively, but only in a legal context. You'll, you'll hear this phrase in the news occasionally, the decision was stayed. And that's a, mm. that refers to a court procedure, not, uh, not like stay at home. Mm. Okay, how about, I've got one more here. Uh, Dina. Hmm. His house was robbed. This motivated him to buy a big bug. Uh, his house being cropped motivated him to buy a big dog. I have a question. Yep. Like, let's say in this, uh, the motor starts with the key being inserted into the ignition. Like, let's say if I want to put is instead of being, I have to say the motor starts comma with the key is inserting into the ignition. No, it's not so, going to work because with. With is a preposition, right? Okay, like if it's, I want to, if I want to use is instead of being in this sentence, how I would change it? Okay, good question. Can you write the sentence so we can see? 
what is it? He, he's talking about these ones. These are all the oh. same thing. Okay. What do you want to put as? Instead of being. Hmm. The first step is the key is inserted into the ignition. Oh, the motor starts after. Yeah. Or the motor starts when the key. Okay. It's inserted, yes. When you put when. After could work here too. All right. Uh, Mr. Ian, if we put after, uh, I think after that we have two options. Either we can use a close after, after the motor starts, after the key is inserted. Or the motor starts after ING. Sorry, one more time. Uh, when we use the uh, after or before. Mm -hmm. So the second part of the sentence, either a clause or sometimes uh, ing. After inserting the key into the engine, the motor starts. Good. Hmm. So I think these two sentences then, will show you that difference. Was, sorry, to, we can use the motor starts after the key being inserted? No, after the key is inserted. Hmm. Uh, you could do after being, oh, this is gonna give you an interesting problem. Hmm. Insert. Ignition. Grammatically, this is correct, but this is a syntax problem known as a misplaced modifier because you've got after being inserted into the ignition, the motor starts. So it's what is being inserted into the ignition? Yes, you missed like the. Here, the subject of two clauses is different. Exactly. So this is, it so, has to be a key yeah. in, the, in the first part. Part, okay. Okay, no need to go to, this is now we know. We, okay. we, we, can, we can say the motor starts while the key, comma, while the key is inserted into the ignition. When? The motor starts when? Not, it's, it's not a continuous process, right? While refers to a continuous process, right? Like a common example that I give is I don't answer the phone while I'm eating dinner. It's a continuous process with an interruption. So Dina, getting back to your point, these two sentences mean the same thing. After he was given a big raise, he bought a new car. So he was given his passive voice, yeah? Yeah. And this one, after he got a big raise, this is active voice. Let's start with the active one. So this is a subordinate clause, and this is also a subordinate clause. So we can transform both of these into participial phrases. Okay. Uh, Dina, go ahead. So with the active voice, after he got a bit raise, he bought a new car. After uh, getting a big raise, a big raise. That's it. Yeah. He bought a new car. Uh, 
Mm. How about this one? Second one after. After being given. That's Have it. A grace. Mm. Have a grace. Yeah. Both of these are participial phrases. This one is active voice. So if your verb is an active voice, this is all you're doing. And again, this part is where you conjugate the verb. All right, so if this were future, could be after getting a big raise, he will buy a new car. Right. After being given a raise, he will buy a new car. He bought a new car. Any tense will work afterwards. And this is your, if the verb is passive, was given, it's passive voice, you change it to being given for any verb tense. So the transformation itself is has very few options. Okay. Any questions or any other examples that, uh, that you want to try? Is the first one active voice or passive voice? Active. And how about the second one? Passive. Okay, Chamri, how do we do the first one? Convert this again as a subordinate clause. We're going to try and convert it to a participial phrase. Uh, before she was finishing her degree? Simpler. Before she finish, before she finishing her degree. Simpler. Before, before she, before finishing her degree. That's it. Mm. The rest is the same. For this transformation, you get rid of the subject. And regardless of the verb tense, past, present, future, as long as it's an active voice, it always transforms into this. Just the ING version, no auxiliaries, no subject, no nothing. Okay, now this one's passive. Go ahead, Chomri. Finish, before being finished. Uh, sorry, the verb's different. She was given. Before. Oh yeah, before being given. That's it. Okay. Yes. Maybe. We'll see. Okay. Let's leave it at that then. We'll see how things go.